Um, my name is Kemal Budak. I volunteer for the Islamic Institute of the Southwest. Uh, our institute was formerly known as Stedel Foundation. It was found in 2001, and this is a non-profit and non-political organization institution, uh, which exclusively operates for charitable, educational, uh, and religious purposes. And we have a, a variety of activities. Uh, this one, uh, the seminars, is one of them. Uh, actually, we do every week uh, Islam for the Curious Mind. Uh, it is attended by both Muslims and non-Muslims. And uh, we usually have uh, Dr. Nazif, he is among us tonight uh, from uh, UH uh, downtown. Uh, he comes and uh, makes most of the time the speech. Uh, but we decided to also make uh, every month uh, some kind of seminar event so that we can uh, address to a broader uh, audience, inshallah. And uh, other than that, we also do uh, faith trips to Turkey, Ramadan dinners, and then uh, Abraham's circle, because you know, Abraham is the uh, Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, is the single, uh, probably the greatest unifier among all the uh, Abrahamic religions, what we call today uh, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. So we invite people from the especially Abrahamic faith to, to the same table and we uh, share our meals together. And uh, we also have Visit My Mosque program. Uh, our aim is to uh, inform the community, Houstonians especially, of course, uh, to ba about the basics of Islam and how Muslims uh, pray daily and how uh, they are 24 hours, uh, they spend their 24 hours daily. And we also have uh, community related events uh, as well marriage, funerals, and weekly prayers, daily prayers, during the Ramadan Tarabi prayers. So we uh, also have all these uh, types of uh, events all together. And tonight, inshallah, uh, our uh, Imam uh, Deni Hernandez, Abdullah Deni Hernandez, will talk about uh, the universality of uh, Islam. Bismillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his final messenger, our beloved, the seal of the prophets, the mercy to all the worlds. Taqwa is the fortress of the heart. Because the word taqwa comes from waqaya, right? Which means to shield, to guard. It does the same as the fortress does for the king. That is taqwa. You do not guide whom you love, but it is Allah who guides whom He wills. So Allah is the guide. Allah, the, the Prophet used to say, and this is to conclude, the Prophet used to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, used to say a dua, and used to say it often. And I would share it with you so that you can try to implement it. Say it often. The dua ya muqallib al qulub wal aqsa thabbit qalbi ala dinik. O you who controls the visions and the hearts, make our hearts firm in your deen. So that is the, my advice is that we have to go back to that foundation because that is the honor of this Ummah. It is not our countries. Our countries are beautiful, and we should be proud of them, we should love them, but imagine what was our countries without Islam. Right? Think about Arabia, how it was before Islam, and what did Islam do for 
Mecca and the burial of newborn daughters and all this and drinking alcohol, making tawaf around the Kaaba with no clothes. Like what did Islam do? Like many ayahs were revealed to, to free slaves. Many, many ayahs. So seeking this knowledge, it's key. If we busy ourselves with seeking knowledge, and, and, and everybody should have a basic standard, right? A basic standard. And once we have this, we will spend little time arguing. My mother, she was in the convent, and she used to teach 50 girls. And she wasn't married. She had some questions when she was in the convent that when she continued to go to higher authority, they couldn't find answers for her. And alhamdulillah, so then later on, later on, I was searching and I began to read the Qur'an, and I became Muslim. And that's another story, but when I became Muslim, I started going to Fajr, morning prayer. And on my way home, when I would come home, I would find my mother in the kitchen making breakfast. And sometimes I would sit and I would read Qur'an in the kitchen. And that's when me and my mom would have conversations. And sometimes I will come across some nice ayahs. All ayahs in the Quran are beautiful, but there's some that you think might relate to my mother, right? So I, I found ayahs about Jesus, about Mary, the one about Ayat and Lord, about, you know, about some of the Quran. So I related to her some ayahs, and it became daily. So every time I would come home from Fajr, I would sit in the kitchen, I would read some Quran in English, and my mom cooking, she would listen to me. And I would have six Bibles. I would have six Bibles and the Quran. Then I got married. When I got married, I left the, uh, my house, and one day my mother said to me, you know, I miss your reading of the Quran. I never tried to impose on her Islam. I said, why? Like, why, do you want, why do you miss the Quran? She said, because most of the questions that I had that made me leave the convent were answered. Our effort, in locally we have two khutbas. Nationally, there's no other khutbas except in Houston. We have two khutbas. You know, uh, in Houston, we have monthly potluck. We have uh, open houses that we go nationwide. Uh, we have alhamdulillah over 500 audio books that we have. Uh, so we focus on books instead of lectures, because lectures you have, you know, somebody giving you a message, but sometimes there is also emotional, personal emotion. But now a book. You're giving a person more content. So we, we since there's no imams, not many imams for one for certain years in, in Colombia, the imams of the masjid were our CDs from Islam and Spanish made in Houston. One person met Brother Mujahid Fletcher in Colombia and said, Your CDs help me and my families, and we heard them over and over and over. So we have 250 TV shows that, that show, show weekly in, in uh, Houston uh, public access channel. For our youth to say, I am an American Muslim, it's okay. But also, they need to know who they are so that they can bring all that khay, all that good and uniqueness from their culture and their country to this beautiful country. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me any, anything bad is for myself, anything good is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this effort and, and, and your patience for, for sitting longer than we expected.
right? I was going to leave earlier, but I felt that your attendance and this cause is very, very important to me uh, to share this, this, this message with you. And mashallah, I really always drive by the way and see the Torah Center. It stands out, mashallah. And I always uh, admire, admire the, the creativity and the, and the, and the infrastructure. Of, of, of this center, it is it is it is a, it is a gem from the gems in Houston, and keep up the effort. Don't rest, as the Prophet told Aisha Khadija, radiallahu when he received the message, the days of rest are over. 